So this is super, super, super easy, and it probably involves things that you may already have laying around. Um, so I'm gonna turn the camera around, and I'm gonna show you what I have here. And you're gonna go, oh, that's so easy. And it has different levels of play. So if you teach threes, or even younger, this, this activity could be done in a couple of different ways. It could be done for older kids too. So there's a couple of different adaptations. So, and now my phone is, um, <laughs> hold on, it's stuck in the, there we go. Okay, I think I just darkened the screen, but whatever. All right, here we go. All right, so here on the table, I have some fake flowers. And I took these from my Dramatic Play flower shop that I recently updated. And so you're gonna need um, probably diff some more colors. My yellow flowers were too big for this activity. My yellow flowers are huge. So um, I need to get some smaller yellow flowers. Yes, and now I think it's gonna be um, backwards so let me flip it back around there we go that's better um, so I need some more flowers but these are the colors I have out right now and then I have this plastic flower pot I don't know where I got it but it's plastic it looks like a regular flower pot but it's plastic and I threw some play-doh in the bottom you know that brown play-doh you have like everyone has brown play-doh right? <laughs> it's the color that it makes when the kids um, mix it together. Use that in here because the color of the Play-Doh does not matter. Um, so don't worry about whatever color Play-Doh you have. Take the brown stuff because that's the stuff that's been squished together. And then you don't need a pocket cube, but I have a pocket cube here. You could do this a couple of different ways. So my pocket cube, it's squishy. You've seen me, if you've watched my lives before, you know this is one of my stranded on a desert island type of materials that I have to have because I use it so often. So this is a squishy foam cube. It's it's like vinyl on the outside. I didn't fill all the pockets because I'm just showing this to you, but um, it's squishy on the outside. It has this vinyl pocket and these, my friends, are index cards, super high tech. So for the easiest way to play, I just scribbled these flowers, these different colored flowers to match the colors of flowers that I have. I scribbled the flower on the index card and stuffed it into the pocket. Okay, so I have the colors that match the flowers that I have here. And the children can take turns. So if your kids are learning colors or if they're at that age where color recognition is something that you're working on with them, all you they have to do is toss the cube and let's say it rolls on blue, right? Now they're going to, woohoo, check that out. Stick a blue flower into their flower pot. So this would be a small group activity. So maybe you'd have four or five kids sitting around in a small group and each child would have a pot. This is a plastic pot. And they would have a ball of old Play-Doh in the bottom. It doesn't even matter if it's kind of crumbly and dried up either because we're not playing with the Play-Doh. It's just holding the flowers up. And then you take your flowers that you got from the dollar store or you had parents donate or you asked your colleagues to bring in, whatever. Um, your parents might have them in the garage you know, <laughs> because uh, fake flowers go out of style, right? Um, and they just roll the cube and whatever color it rolls on is the color that they put in the pot. So that's the really easy version, right? That's the version for your little ones okay now for your older kiddos you can do change your um, index cards to make them into dice right make them into the pips on a die and then you um, stick those into your pocket cube or you just use a regular old dice i just used this pocket cube because it was versatile tonight and then they roll it and that's the number of flowers they get to put in their pot. Now, one way to do this, to add a little extra level, is to have two cubes. Now, I would do that with wooden cubes that you can get blank wooden cubes at the craft store. And then you can draw colored dots on one cube and then you can do um, the dots on a die on the other cube and they roll them together. So if they would get three and then they would roll the color purple, they would put three purple into their 
into their pot. So that's another way to do it. For your older kids, you could take um, two dice, have them roll them and add them together to put that number in their pot. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of different levels to this. Super easy, Play-Doh in the pot, plastic pot, fake flowers. You could even, some of you have the um, flowers that you got from the Target dollar spot, the big plastic ones. You could try it with those. Um, I'm not sure that you could fit like six into that pot. You might have to make your game only up to three or something. Um, they're a little bit bigger than this pot, I believe. And I also think that they this pot is too deep for those. But I like these because they have long stems. They're cheap. You can play with them in different ways. Okay, so that is a super easy uh, spring game. Debbie said something about milk cartons, but I didn't see them. Four days until spring break, says Michelle. You can do this. Hey, Lori from the Teaching Tribe is here. Jen from the Teaching, the other Jen from the Teaching Tribe is here. Roberta from the Teaching Tribe is here. Kathleen is on spring break. See, that's how dedicated our teachers spend their spring break online looking for more ideas. They do not get uh, just to sit around and eat bonbons. Um, but hey, if they do, that's cool. Um, yay, April is here from North Carolina. I'm glad you like the ideas. Hey, Anne-Marie, Nicole. Okay, I'll go back and check out Debbie's idea. Oh, you can use milk cartons maybe instead of the um, pots. Yes, absolutely. Okay, Donna from the Teaching Tribe is here. Lots of Teaching Tribe members in the house. Okay, so this was my super quick and easy um, math activity with different levels of play um, for all the different levels that you might have in your classroom because we have teachers from lots of different levels here. I'm gonna stick all these in the pot. <laughs> I just cheated at the game. Teacher, she cheated. And then um, for your spring erasers, I wanted to share this with you. So I got these spring erasers at Joann's. Um, you can use any kind of mini erasers you have, but this is the mini eraser freebie from Pre-K Pages. So Tom will drop a link to that in the comments for you below if you wanna grab it. Um, but the freebie is is just it lays things out for kids to use these erasers in a really fun way so they could do uh, mini eraser graphing my little lamb is upside down there um, they could graph they could grab a handful or you could give them to them and then they could graph how many they got I have way too many chickies here but you know you get the picture so they can graph them oops and there goes a chicky on the floor um, you could do mini eraser counting. So I got these mini erasers at Joann's and they were a dollar and a quarter on sale. I don't know if they still have them. They had them at mine, I believe last week. And so your kids can count the mini erasers in there. And they have all kinds of erasers out there. I haven't seen any in the dollar spot. Well, I did see Easter. I saw the bunnies and the carrots and the eggs and then the outer space. Um, I have tons and tons of mini erasers, like an obscene amount of mini erasers. So I don't always notice when they have them because I have so many already. But so they can do that one. This, these are, this is a freebie at Pre-K Pages. So you can go and grab that. Tom will drop a link for you below. This one, they could write the numbers if they wanted to. It's the same exact activity. And this one is blank if you'd like to have them not trace it. And this one goes up to 10. If your kids are a little more advanced and you'd like them to work on counting up to 10, you can do that one with the mini erasers. So they just put, ooh, the little chickies fit perfectly in there. I love it. And these came from Joann's. I did not see these at the dollar spot this year. Um, but I have tons of bunnies and eggs and carrots, so I didn't need any more. Um, patterns, check it out. You could do an A and a B, right? I need another lamb and a B, right? You could cut this into strips if your kids are only working on one kind of patterning right now. That's up to you. Um, you could do sorting, right? So you could have them grab a handful and they could sort them. 
I didn't do a very good sorting job there. And after they sorted them, they could write the numbers in there if they are able to. And then we have these 10 frames. They're designed to be cut in half here. And here they're just going to, on each 10 frame, they're just going to place the number of erasers right there. There you go. We also have the mini eraser math packet that has images to go with all the different um, target dollar spot erasers that they've had over the last couple of years. So I hope that you collection of mini erasers in a large egg. Oh yes, that's great, Julia. That's a brilliant idea. She says, have the kids um, put mini erasers in a large egg and then graph or record what was inside. I love it. Target, whoops, ooh, ooh, I hope I didn't delete anybody. Target had 200 mini spring erasers for $3, says Michelle. Yes, those, those mini erasers in the box were super cool. I must admit I bought some even though I already had <laughs> carrots and bunnies <laughs> and all I had all of those um, let's see Debbie says add a number for instance six and then add six bunnies the kids toss the dice and hop that many times oh that's a lovely idea Debbie I love that she's full of great ideas always um, oh Debbie's talking when she was talking about the milk cartons she was talking about like the little ones they drink for lunch, push the bottoms together to make a cube. Yes, you don't need that. Yes, absolutely. Love, love, love that. You guys are full of great ideas. Um, Sushma says uh, her son is on spring break and she's using these ideas at home. Wonderful, so glad. Um, I'm gonna flip, see if I can flip the camera around. There we go, whoops. I had my pop socket out, couldn't get it back in there. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So I hope that you liked that activity. So, so simple, right? It's a plastic pot, some Play-Doh, and some um, fake flowers. And could you even print flowers, images of flowers off the internet and glue them to popsicle sticks? It would still work if you did it that way. So if you don't have access or you don't have time to get access to um, fake flowers, then printing some off the internet and slapping them on popsicle sticks would work. I suppose that I should probably make that and give that to you. That would be a great idea. <laughs> so I can do that and I can send that out with my weekly email. So if you're not already on my email list, go ahead and sign up there. And then when I send the email out on Wednesday, you'll get a copy of the printable Oops, just dropped my flowers. The printable flowers that you can glue or tape onto the ends of craft sticks, and you could do your activity that way if you prefer. I just like to have three dimensional things because I feel like when kids can touch and feel, it's just more engaging for them to actually touch a fake flower. I mean, if you have real flowers, that'd be great too. I don't know, they wouldn't last very long. Um, <laughs> don't take them from your neighbor's garden. They wouldn't like that. Um, <laughs> but um, we use the next best thing that we can when it comes to 3D hands-on activities. So that's why I like the fake flowers, but I totally get it. If you don't have access to those, um, you could just print them out and glue them to craft sticks, popsicle sticks, because um, hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? Hey, all of you see. Um, for those of you who uh, are members of our free Facebook group, Preschool Teachers Are Superheroes, um, you may have seen me go live earlier today. So we are starting, it's Monday, and we are starting a new thing over in the Facebook group. We have four themed lives every week not at a predetermined time, whenever I can get to it, but it's Motivation Mondays, where I'm gonna give you some motivating tips. It is What's Up Wednesdays, when I share what's new in the world, either on my blog, on the Facebook page, or whatever, in the group, whatever's happening that's new. What's Up Wednesdays. And then we're gonna have Thoughtful Thursdays, where I tackle a really hot topic. Um, I already have the topic for this Thursday. It's going to be juicy. And then Steals and Deals Saturdays, where I share my weekly finds um, at the dollar stores, at the local dollar stores. So you're going to want to make sure that you're in the group so you can have access to those four themed 
um, short live videos every week. Of course, if you can't catch them live, they'll be there in the recordings available for you to watch. And I'm going to put them um, in the group uh, reminders of when they'll, you know, what the days are and stuff so that you'll know. So if you're not already a member of that free Facebook group, go ahead and join. And then very, very soon we are going to start contests in the group too, and you can win prizes. So you're going to want to be sure that you are in the group. But if you're um, considering joining, make sure that you read the rules before you join. Um, that's the most important thing about the group is that we follow our rules so that we can keep it a safe and positive place for all of our members um, for all things um, early childhood education and pre-K pages. So this is our regularly scheduled broadcast every Monday and Wednesday, 7 Central, 8 Eastern, here on the Pre-K Pages Facebook page. If you know anybody who would like a fun and easy spring math activity, um, then go ahead and share this with them or tag them or whatever way that you see fit. And we have lots and lots of great stuff in store for you here at Pre-K Pages over the next few months. We've got um, the Teaching Tribe will be opening again soon. We've got uh, conferences galore, meetups, all of that stuff we're working on very hot, very hard behind the scenes. So you have to stay tuned so that you won't miss any of it. So thanks a lot for watching. Have a great night and I will see you Wednesday. Bye.